Good morning and welcome to The Positive Habit. Delighted, as always, to be with you and to help you start your week smiling. I want to talk to you this week about something close to my heart. And that is that last week, there was the sad passing of Ivor Brown. Now, you may know who he is or was, but he uh, is someone that was very instrumental in my life and helping me to open the door to my heart and therefore hopefully help others to do the same. So Ivor Brown was and is an iconic figure in Irish mental health. He was someone who was really a visionary, ahead of his times and was so dedicated to, to helping people who were suffering. He did not believe in the chemical model. He believed in really getting to the heart of matters and helping people to uncover what was actually going on in their psyche and how he could help alleviate their suffering. I first met Ivor and um, it was about seven years ago, I think at this stage, and I had requested a meeting with him as I was someone who really admired his work. And he was the type of person who would give, and I'm sure he's helped many, many other people. He would give to anyone he thought that had a similar vision to himself in terms of really trying to make the world a more content place, a place where people could live at peace with themselves. And so I remember going into his, he had offices in Dunleary, and I remember sitting in the waiting room and you know the feeling when you're about to meet someone that you really admire and you're nervous? Well, I remember being really nervous and I was practicing all my techniques to breathe deeply and say, you know, he's just another person like me or you or anyone and, and to be, you know, at peace and calm myself. And I'm gonna read you a poem in a moment that was on the wall of his offices, but I'm gonna do that in a moment. But before I do, I'll just tell you um, what happened then. So as soon as, uh, I think I had to wait, like, you know, and again, it makes it worse when you have to wait. The longer you have to wait, the more, the more nervous you can get. Um, and I was waiting quite a while because he was a really, really busy person and he had been kind enough to, to find the time to see me. And eventually he opened the door and um, gave me the warmest hug. And it was in that moment of like, just that acceptance and that warmth that my whole system, my whole nervous system uh, went into regulation and I felt so at ease and I was able to speak really freely, to be very present um, and I'm so grateful to him for that. So he went on to uh, endorse, first of all, my online course that he looked at and then also my book, my first book, The Positive Habit. And really what I want to share with you this week, before I read this poem, and I'm gonna read this poem, um, is that I want you to consider, is there somebody there uh, who perhaps needs your guidance, your help in the same way that Ivor took the time to help me um, at a pivotal point in my career? Um, is, it, is there someone there that you could help? And I think we need to really be very aware of this, um, that we need to look at the world and, and, and see who, who can we help today? Who is there that actually could do with a help in some way, a, a step up, a, a, you know, an awareness of their work, an awareness of, of what they might need, and then to be proactive about that. So if somebody comes to you, a younger person, um, somebody who's looking for help starting out or whatever it might be, can you actually make that time? Because that's what Ivor did, and I think that it's something we can all really learn from, and um, to show that, uh, act of kindness if you like and it really it doesn't actually take much but it makes such a difference to that person's life so that is there this if anyone is looking for help from me i always always do my best and um, to give that help and to help uh, anyone else who wants to be a therapist or is interested in writing books or whatever it is is to to reach out and, and be that person and um, so the poem on the wall is one that has stayed with me. I have definitely read it to many clients over the years, having seen it, first of all, as I say, in the waiting room, as I was waiting to see Ivor. And it is called, To Love At All, 
is to be vulnerable. So love anything and you will be wrong and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact. Oh my God, I have to start this again. There's a pivotal word there that I forgot. So bear with me <laughs> it's because I don't have my glasses. One moment. Okay, here we go. To love at all is to be vulnerable. And I am vulnerable. We all are. Love anything and your heart will, your heart will be wrong and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. To love is to be vulnerable. C.S. Lewis, and that is from The Four Loves. So when I'm working with someone and I can see that they're really have if you like close their heart in some way that they find it hard to connect to the people that they do love but find that the relationship is somehow disconnected the relationship from themselves is disconnected they might find it hard to feel emotion at all i have taken out this poem from this little black book that i have um, this is a book where i write down different things that i feel really are uh, in some way guiding my life at that particular time insights from different spiritual leaders poems etc and it's a lovely book it's just a simple little black book where I write things down and that poem is, is definitely in there as one of the main ones that I would go to uh, when working with someone and um, so I thought I would share it with you today and you know, again, you can ask yourself that question. Are you sometimes maybe closing your heart down? And we can all do this. It's, it's really understandable. It's a way of protecting ourselves. It's very hard to be vulnerable in particular with the people that we love. So just to consider these things, um, the first being, can you be that light that Ivor was and is to me and I'm sure many other people in the a health and wellness field in therapy and can you also then maybe just connect in with your own heart and that was so much of his work was in heartfulness meditation and I was fortunate enough to be uh, in the room with him many times where he would uh, guide the meditations and again those moments stay with me and really really have opened up my heart more and more so from my heart to your heart. Thank you for watching. Have a brilliant week and um, I will be with you this evening. I'm starting self-compassion training, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, this is level two. So if you're joining me, you're so, so welcome. And we're going to definitely get into those lovely areas of the heart gently and of course, with great compassion. Lots of love. See you soon. See you next week. Bye.